All right, hello, and this is basically, uh, I've been working on a sort of procedurally generated roguelike for my third year university project, and I just wanted to make a little video on that, showing what I've done. So basically, I'm, I should probably switch these to multi one tab. I don't need the asset store. Uh, all right, I'll just make this a little bigger. But I don't want to have it full screen. Uh, basically, so if I press play, it, well, as you can see, it procedurally generates a level. So if I stop and then start again, different level. Stop, start, different level again. Although they just look kind of similar, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, basically it's a procedurally generated level. I'm having it sort of like set on a space station. The doors are a bit glitchy with the whole sorting order, but kind of works and that is an annoying glitch I've not I've just found but oh well yeah so I wanted to talk a little bit about how it actually works I don't know why that door is drawn there should be drawn on there weird okay maybe it's not as working as well as I thought oh well so yeah uh, task is procedurally generated roguelike so I chose if you've seen death trash it's a I kind of went for that with the whole character dude but the art's not fully done yet, I just did basic ones so I could focus on the generation and the hierarchy's a bit fucking messy, but whatever. So yeah, uh, basically what it does is... Oh shit, what am I doing? I don't know why he's doing that, fuck. Okay, uh, let's just pause that. Uh, basically, to generate a level, I've got like a... Before all the level starts and that, I've got a little dude that like says, alright, we're going to start at, say, the midpoint of a level, and we're going to have a direction, a random direction, that either goes up, down, left, or right. So it'll make a move, and he's got two sort of numbers between 0 and 1, which start at 0 0.05, which are the odds of creating, changing the, the odds of changing direction, and the odds of creating a room. And each time he moves, those odds increases, and it generates a ran, another random number between 0 and 1. And if... Well, it just does two that are between 0 and 1. One for the odds of creating a room and one for the odds of changing direction. And if the random number generated is lower than the odds of creating it, then it will create a room and or change direction. So yeah, it does this for a set number of moves, I believe. How many did I set it to? Uh, quid generator... Uh, I think it was 1,200. Oh, 2,500 moves is the max number of moves, because I figured it's a 50 by 50 grid. 50 by 50, sorry. So 2,500 seems similar. So, like, if I set it to less, so say if we wanted to do just a 1,000, not a million, uh, a 1,000 moves, it would generate a much more sparse level, but it still generate a level. See how it's less rooms, more corridors, and that. You know, so we can have, say, even... Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, and that's how the generation works. So it'll literally just iterate through that to mark out where the level is. So it'll mark out... So if it doesn't create a room or draw... Or change... If it doesn't create a room, it creates a corridor tile, which is marked out by these ones here, the other with the blue with the pipes and that. And, yeah. If it does create a room... It does, that. and once it's gone through all these moves that it can do, uh, I've got code that runs through the grid checking. All right, if it's a corridor or a room, but if it isn't, it's set to one of these uh, tiles, so it's like unwalkable. So it's just so we don't need to consider it anymore. And the next, the room tiles are stored. Uh, we basically check. All right, I think it goes. For each room, we draw, we check the border tiles, and if we border in with the corridor, we can draw a uh, door. And yeah, but you know, I'm thinking if we've got like a wall along with the corridor, wouldn't it just draw like loads of doors all next to each other? Well, that's we uh, how you do. Well, I implemented sort of an erosion, if you can imagine it, like where I say. Because it go, it does this, uh, runs this function multiple times to check like whether a tile should be a door or a wall or a corridor or whatever. So first pass through, it just checks. All right, 
it just goes by. If a tile is next to a corridor and is on the edge of a room, it'll make a door. And on the second pass, it'll have it'll, have, it'll go through the same rules, but it'll check like uh, say if there are doors adjacent to this tile, then we can we'll say all right, we don't want this tile to be a door anymore, and we'll mark it so it can't be set to it to ever be a door again. And that'll just like get rid of all the doors except for maybe one or two that are like on the same wall. So yeah. And I've also got like code that just looks for uh, say adjacent rooms that don't have a corridor between them. So we're gonna create like we're gonna knock through the wall, just create a little, like a little environmental detail and whatnot. And yeah. And I've also uh, is that out? Yeah, I've also got code that because one thing that I realised what I needed to do that I needed to do when the procedures generated is work out if like say if a room is valid, so like if you can get to all the places of all other rooms in a level from that particular room, because I've got a basic version of a star pathfinder worked out to the tile, mapped to the tiles. So if I go ahead and press R, it'll just hang for a second, and then it's painted some tiles blue. Now this is basically what the function I just called did by press it, does by pressing R is. It'll go through each room, so each room has a slightly different shade of purpley floor tiles, so that one's dark, light, a sort of a medium light. It'll go through every room and try and draw a path to the other rooms, which is marked by the blue tiles, which is a path that has been taken at least once. So that helps mark out rooms, because if, like, if it's sort of the blue tiles are a connected loop, then that suggests that all the rooms that touch these blue tiles are, in fact, valid rooms because they're connected, so you'd be good to store gameplay elements in them, like vital ones. But say if it was more evident on the 2500 uh, iterations, so or moves for the creating the grid, so I'll show you that. Uh, 2500. So if we draw this uh, one, hopefully it will actually create one with a I press R, it'll hang a bit more because I have a lot more tiles that can be that are possible to do. Uh, so yeah, so if we have a look at this, we can see that uh, see that there's blue tiles again in all of them. But if there aren't, this, you can see now here, like say here is a room that uh, isn't touched by the blue tiles because it can't find a path out of the room. Uh, again here. Well, this whole like quadrant of the uh, gate, like map, it actually isn't accessible to the rest of the game world. So I've not implemented yet, but what I'm going to do is sort of mark these as sort of invalid rooms, if you will. And again, the same for these. So because uh, each, if you, if I just show you the debugging log, uh, basically these uh, x plus twenty four plus y plus twenty six is basically the tile that they starting to draw the path from from the room and the f number after it is basically corresponds to how many rooms it can reach so you'll see this one has zero but this one has 37 which suggests it can re reach the majority of all accessible rooms and say this one is a uh, which is one so it might be say this room because there's two rooms that are connected but they're not connected to the wider level so say if a room is more than the mean, is higher than the mean minus two, because I'm pretty sure having an offset of two won't matter that much. So if the number of rooms it can reach is less than the mean minus two, then we'll use that room as an active room so we can have uh, some kind of like objective for enemy to spawn in it. Uh, so it won't break gameplay by a uh, like locking off, say, a level entry or exit teleporter in a room that the player can't get to. Whereas at the same time, we could make use of these uh, inaccessible rooms as sort of like an environmental detail. Like, say, since the player can't see him, you could just like set them on fire or something, or have some kind of detail. I don't know. You can think of think of some kind of a storytelling detail of the thing, just to make it look a bit prettier and 
it saves having to do more code to actually merge, put these rooms in the game. And since we're right, when we pop, when I'm going to populate the rooms, uh. I'll make sure that only the accessible ones are well good to be used for pop, for putting stuff in like weapons and stuff. And yeah. So that was a quick explanation of my procedural experiments in procedural generation. I'll probably have an update maybe after Christmas because I'll have implemented a lot more features and maybe actually populated some of this shit. So yeah, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I think I've got more tutorials coming out next week or something if I can be bothered to program it. If I don't, if I don't get snowed under by work because image processing in MATLAB is sort of killing me at uni and I've got my... Uh, e-learning project due in on the 9th I'm going to see Corn on the 12th which will be fun and yeah so I've got a busy run up to Christmas and then I've got three weeks off so I should be able to churn out some content for you I think I'm working on the louder quiet stuff tomorrow actually I've got a new level I've got to finish off implementing those redesigned levels and start working out like i got to finish off I've got three levels to finish off then I'll probably make another update video and then what else? I think I've I've got like the base of the uh, new cutscene I want to implement done. I've just got to work out all the content I've got to put into the other cutscenes as well. So I'm basically going to have to redo all the cutscenes. Technically, they're still having all the content from the old cutscenes. I'm just adding more like uh, maps to the levels, background lore, shit like that. So yeah, uh, cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. There'll be links to other stuff I've done on itch.io if you want to have a look. Especially Loud or Quiet. That is my baby. So go play that. Alright, cheers for watching. Bye.